Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So we are happy to say that we've got Lior Gantz back here today, and we're going to break down all kinds of changes that have been happening in the economy, the market, all those things that impact the value of our gold and silver. Lior, welcome. How are you doing today? Doing well. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for being here. So a lot of changes have happened within the Federal Reserve since we talked three months ago. We've seen uh, three rate hikes now, and for the first time, actually, in a a little bit of time, a little reduction in the year-over-year -year inflation numbers going down just slightly uh, last month. But I'm curious to know your take on things, as I know you watch it like a hawk. So what's going on with the Fed today? Um, I, the Fed is obviously fighting something that it, it was late to acknowledge. And uh, therefore, in order to uh, stop it from becoming a real a real problem where uh, you'd really have a borderline hyperinflation in the U.S. Uh, they raised rates aggressively this year, and um, for many businesses, for many households, uh, for a lot of institutions, this came as a shock. Uh, if you remember, in January of this year, they talked about raising rates by 75 basis points for the full year. So going from zero to to 0 0.75, uh, and not doing what they're uh, what they've done uh, uh, so far, which is far more aggressive. So what the Fed is trying to basically stop is uh, the over addiction to the zero interest rates policies and to the stimulus from the government stimulus checks, etc. This feeling of invincibility from a lot of the giant firms that were over hiring and overpaying. Uh, and when I say overpaying, it's not that I'm against uh, better wages for people. When I say overpaying, I mean with stock compensation. So paying paying somebody X for the base salary and paying another five, six X with uh, uh, issuing more stock. So th this societal behavioral change that you saw in Silicon Valley, but then you saw it also in uh, the lower income brackets where people were living way above their means is what uh, created this inflationary um, spiral up. And then it all was coupled with closing down and reopening the economy uh, and all the supply chain issues that you had. Uh, so all of that, and if you marry it, created what we have today. So now the question is, there are basically two questions that are really important. One is how high do interest rates need to go in order to really change the behavior of households, consumers, and businesses? And two, how long does it take from when they change their behavior until we get to that level of 2 or 3% inflation that we enjoyed for, uh, for 20 years plus? And those two questions are what uh, the Fed care about uh, cares about. So I think that that's where they are. They're trying to understand whether or not inflation has already peaked. And the second thing they're trying to understand is how much of a lag there is on what they're doing. Because if there is a huge lag, then they might have even over tightened. And if there's only a small uh, short lag, then they might need to tighten more. So as we head into the December meeting, uh, what the Fed really wants to see before their meeting is the CPI report that comes a few days before, and they want to see what if there's a real trend. If if there's a trend of two months, then um, then it's already uh, you know something that we can grasp onto a little bit. But in my opinion, they are finding a problem that is going to stay with us for a long time. Uh, and when I say a long time, I mean between 24 and 36 months of high inflation. High inflation being over five percent. And uh, I think that the second thing they're fighting is that what they're doing is probably going to lead into either a soft or a uh, mild uh, recession. In some, uh, in some ways, they're risking even a, a full-blown classical recession. When I say classical recession, I mean that, they're, that, that we are going to see much more layoffs than we've seen so far. Uh, and not just the contraction of GDP, but people hurting the systemic uh, problems, ones that uh, political pressures start to play on the Fed. And they, uh, at some point, they need to start 
uh, pivoting, which is what they don't want to do. So all of this drama is playing out. That's why I, I put together the the, uh, the special report for your viewers about these two topics, uh, one of them being wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash out, which is a short for fake out, because I think that the, the numbers we saw in um, in November for the CPI were a fake out. I don't think that uh, it's going to be that easy to stop inflation just with interest rates. So th definitely, if you have time this weekend or when you're watching this interview, download that report because it's going to show you a little bit about why I think it's a fake out. And secondly, it's wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash fake, which is, uh, uh, I called it that way because I think the dollar is a fake haven and it's, uh, it's having a phenomenal year in 2022. Uh, but for all the wrong reasons. And so I think that it's a fake haven and people that um, uh, save everything in, in, in dollar terms are going to be very surprised come 2023. Um, do you think, Lior, that that 2 to 3% inflationary target is a bit of a pipe dream right now? It, it could, can we come back to that reality with all of the uh, poor fiscal decisions that have been made over the last couple of years? Um, I, I think... Uh, that it will take between two to three years for inflation to even come below 5%. So, um, and, and trying to call inflation more than three years out is, is not something that uh, uh, it's it's just, it's a pure guess. So uh, I, I think that it, it, the, the more important thing to, to realize is that we are going to have high inflation for the next few years and that you need to understand how you operate in that type of environment. Uh, exactly. That's the first thing. Um, so uh, that's point number one. We, the inflation genie is out of the box, out of the uh, the bottle, I guess. Um, and and, and um, it's not easy with just raising interest rates to change um, to change behaviors and to change the dynamics that are outside of the scope of what the Fed can do. At the end of the day, the Federal Reserve is a bank, and a bank has very limited limited tools in order to fight inflation um, if they want to keep it um, in, in in a um, in a non drastic type scenario. They can always raise interest rates absurdly and make everything really lousy for uh, for the Americans um, for two three years and have a real like a real severe uh, recession. But it's not what they want. Um, but and, and in order to stop that, they uh, they need to really manage this uh, masterfully. And I don't know that they can. So and that's point number one. And that means that the stock market uh, could be um, uh, trade way, uh, trading sideways for the next year, two years, and maybe even three years. When we don't get it back to those all time highs. Of November 2021. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, it, it certainly feels like it's too late to time out of the market because uh, uh, stocks have corrected down so much, mm -hmm. but it could be too early to get back in and to become aggressive uh, on, on the flip side. And Lior, in your report, are, are, are you um, are you talking to, to us here, the retail investor, about how we can navigate uh, everything that you just told us about uh, the job market starting to collapse, inflation staying high, and uh, the potential for recession for upwards of 36 months. Yeah. Um, so the best way to to always keep in touch with uh, exactly what I feel like and and, and um, what I'm doing is with uh, the newsletter, and you can subscribe for uh, for free on the uh, on um, on our homepage at wealthresearchgroup.com. But if you want to talk about like a playbook for the recession and what to do. I think step number one is to become indispensable at your place of, of work. Um, and if you own a business is to become indispensable to your, um, to your customers. And if that means you need to innovate, you innovate. And if that means you need to uh, do things that, that, that you thought you were above, uh, then go back to the drawing board because uh, what Elon Musk is showing you with Twitter is basically the end of the zero interest rate policy hiring mode. And when I, what I mean by that is when he went in there and said, okay, here's a bunch of people that I don't need. Uh, I can do the same amount of efficiency 
and I need to get to that bottom line profit because that's exactly what everyone cares about now. Nobody cares about growth or revenue growth just for the sake of growth. And then we'll figure out a way to monetize this business and to uh, drive home a bottom line because we don't live in a zero interest rate world anymore. Now investors, they don't want to pay a premium for future profits because they can go to uh, the bond market and they can lend money to American Airlines and get 12% or go to real estate and, and make 10%. Oh, so yeah. why would they why would they go to uh, to a growth company and pay an extreme amount of premium because of future growth? They don't. They don't want to, they don't care to, and that's why you might have some uh, distressed uh, companies in in the next 6 to 8 months as we enter the the real part of the recession. So that's why I'm saying Make sure that you're really indispensable. And if and if problems come, manage them. Immediately find a new employer or uh, customers that you can serve. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two is I think that for the, um, for the average investor, as weird as it sounds, uh, it's probably better to stay more cashed up than usual, even with high inflation. Now, let me explain. This year, for example, 2022, if and let's say we're being uh, not conservative, so we we don't we we think the CPI is bullshit, and we actually go off of the shadow stats or whatever else you want to say, and you think inflation is let's say, tell me what you you've been telling your viewers 15, 17, 18. Yeah, yeah, about that. Okay, even at those levels, you're probably better having a, a a higher cash position than being in the markets. So because uh, as you can see, if companies like Amazon can fall 50%, then where's safety in the stock market, right? Yeah, if, the, right. if the entire NASDAQ complex is down 30 something percent and you only lost, I don't know, 15% uh, of your, uh, if you're a believer in the, in the mega you know, uh, inflation story or 8% if, if you're following the official, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, uh, the risk of being in cash, even uh, in a stinkflationary environment, is often uh, less than being in the market. Is I think you need to get ready for the dollar to peak and then to get into um, or, or to uh, increase uh, significantly your exposure to silver. I think silver is the most undervalued of them all in terms of the commodities, because yeah. it's so inversely correlated to the dollar. The dollar is super strong. And I think that uh, the way it's going to happen is the first thing you're going to see, you're going to see signs of a recession. Silver is not going to do well. That's between now and June. I think those are the, the months that silver is going to be a laggard. Right. Um, towards the June meeting, the Fed is starting is going to start to acknowledge that we are in a recession. And counterintuitively to Wall Street, what that means is they're probably going to stop raising rates. So you may start to see that as they announce that there is a recession, which you would think is the worst thing, right? Uh, Wall Street is actually going to create the bottom is, and stocks are going to start to rally. Yeah. Because finally, the Fed is acknowledging that there is a recession. <laughs> Everyone knew it. Everyone knows it. Now the Fed acknowledges it, meaning that they're going to change the way that they behave. So that's one thing. Secondly, I think that uh, uh, it, during the second half of 2023, silver might uh, start to, to rally a little bit. But the, the, real, um, the real boom, the real boom is going to be once we're on the other side of the, uh, the recession and we're recovering. In the recovery, I think the reflation trade is going to be incredible, just like between 2009 and 2011, when silver went from 9 to 49. Right. Only this time, I think it will start from about 15 and go to 60. And I don't think it will happen in two years. I think it will take four to five years. So by the end of this decade, basically, or by 2028, 2029, I think we're looking at silver at all-time highs. At the same time, I think that gold has a, uh, has a potential to reach between 2,500 and 3,000. So I do think that uh, we are uh, a long ways from uh, the rally. So in other words over 12 to 18 months before we're going to see a huge move in precious metals. I think 2023 is more going to be the year 
of the recession. And 2024 is going to start to be the year of the recovery. Um, so in other words, 2023, the priorities are your job, cash, watch list, be ready for the turnaround and so on. All right. Well, we'll definitely be watching it here on the channel. I'll keep my viewers posted, and I'm sure the team at Wealth Research Group will also do the same thing. Uh, Lior, thanks for joining us today. Once more, everybody, down in the video description section, we'll have a couple of links uh, to these special reports that Lior talked about. And uh, yeah, thank you all for being here today. Please leave your questions down in the comment section, and I'll be happy to get an answer for you. And if I can't answer it, I'll reach out to Lior and see if see if I can't get an answer directly to you as well. So uh, thank you again, Lior. Hope you have a great day. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Hopefully uh, next quarter, we can see how thank this all much. plays out. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, you. Thanks again. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel.